I am delighted to be joined today by Vijay Sankaran from Johnson Controls. Vijay, would you like to just give a quick introduction to yourself? Good morning, John. Uh, I'm Vijay Sankaran. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Johnson Controls. Um, I'm responsible for all of our digital business as well as uh, engineering across the company. Super excited to be here this morning. Um, Vijay, the reason we're talking mainly today is because Johnson Controls has been awarded with Frost & Sullivan's Customer Value Leadership Award in the North American uh, Smart & Connectors Chillers market, which is a, a, an exciting topic to be talking about. Um, but really, we, we all know that, uh, that Johnson Controls has a great pedigree in HVAC and chillers, but the award is very much about bringing a technology and customer focus to the to the overall solution and uh, driving up benefits for building owners and operators in lots of different areas around efficiency, connectivity, energy performance, user experience, etc. So maybe we could start with the whole broad smart buildings topic. It's a big theme at the moment. In, in truth, it has been for a little while, but we're really seeing momentum gathering now. How do you define at Johnson Controls? Uh, how do you define a, a, a smart building and how are they superior or different? Uh, tra 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 traditional building technology configurations? Well, I mean, I think, John, the reason that smart buildings are such an important topic today is you have to really start with the macro factors of what's going on, you know, around our environment. So number one, uh, you know, buildings contribute 40% of carbon emissions on a global basis. Um, that was something that was super motivating to me when I came to Johnson Controls. And so there's the whole you know, real um, driver around sustainability and decarbonization, you know, as we see more and more extreme weather events around the world and really a race across the world to, you know, reduce our overall carbon emission level. So number one, buildings play a huge part in that. Number two is the higher costs of energy that are being generated for a variety of reasons across the world, whether that's geopolitical conflicts or whether it's you know the scarcity of different kinds of natural resources or fundamentally the choice to you know choose different forms of energy like battery and electric um, versus traditional fossil fuels. The third macro factor that's going on at the same time is you know post COVID-19 pandemic you have people using spaces in very different ways than they did prior to the pandemic, where you know patterns were fairly stabilized, and whether it was you know 50% you know utilization, which is you know kind of the baseline in North America, versus you know a much higher baseline in Asia Pac, you know close to 90 or 100%, you know um, you're seeing much more fluctuation in the spaces and how they're used and when they're used, you know uh, across the globe, and so. You look at all of these sort of macro patterns, as well as the need to put more of an emphasis on safety and security, as you can see, given recent geopolitical events, you know, inside your campus spaces and inside your corporate spaces, you know, these are really the key drivers that enable the smart building. And so, you know, traditionally, if you look at a non-smart building, um, you know, you had security systems, you had fire systems, you have HVAC systems, you have uh, very few sensors inside the building that are doing things like measuring humidity and temperature, and these were all disconnected. Um, they were not talking to each other, individual stove pipe systems. And similar to, you know, the IT revolution over the last 15 years where we've integrated data into data platforms, that same revolution is what powers the smart building. And so you could think of Open Blue at its essence as the smart building's data and analytics platform. Um, and really leveraging AI on top of that to drive outcomes around energy, sustainability, safety, security, and, and predictive maintenance, you know, across uh, a smart building. And so in summary, what Open Blue does and why we're so excited about it is, is that it connects all of these different data sources and devices that sit at the edge in a standardized fashion, brings them up to the cloud uh, in an integrated data repository. Um, really applies the analytics and artificial intelligence um, against it to deliver those outcomes that customers can then use to decarbonize their, their buildings, uh, make them more energy efficient, and, and in essence, make them a smart building.
Do you think maybe particularly from a technology and customer point of view, there are any other forces really sort of driving change, particularly at the moment and in the next few years? Yeah, I mean, I think the other thing from uh, a customer point of view that's really driving changes, you know, a lot of customers are looking at their overall, you know, real estate footprint on a global basis. They're trying to become much more efficient, you know, in terms of understanding their real estate footprint, what exists in it, how they can consolidate. Um, I think there's also a worker scarcity in terms of, you know, um, repairing uh, equipment. And as we get more into the connected chiller discussion, that's a big driver is that, you know, anytime there's a fault on, you know, a piece of equipment, you know, in the traditional model, you'd have to send a service dispatch somebody physically out to the space to check it. Uh, as there's labor scarcity and increased labor costs, I think customers are trying to find you know new ways of efficiency. Uh, from a technology standpoint, a lot of what enables that is something that we are leading on, which is edge technology and how do you connect to so many different devices on the edge? How do you collect it in a standardized way? And then how do you write back into the building in a secure way such that you can actually adjust the settings inside of the building and then make it fully autonomous in the sense that, you know, as temperatures change, utilization patterns change, how do you actually send and respond to um, what's going on in the building within real time? That customer experience piece is, is broad because it's about the uh the, the the actual users and visitors to to buildings and so on but also about the the uh the staff delivering maintenance solutions and and that um uh, that staff staffing piece you mentioned i think has been a big challenge to the sector in in recent years and looks likely to uh, to be prevalent for some time Let's take a look at the Johnson Controls Open Blue uh, Chiller solution as, a, as an example of, of smart building technology in action. Um, I think what Frost and Sullivan has been particularly impressed uh, about this when we uh, when we bestowed the award on Johnson Controls was really the the customer centricity of the solution, um, the use of data insights to tackle the the most important customer pain points, um, and 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 really helping achieve energy and sustainability goals. Well, of course. Um, enhancing maintenance programs and, and uh, optimizing uh, efficiency of performance of the asset, which will always continue to be important, no matter what other things, uh, what other trends and technology we layer on top. Um, Vijay, can you tell us a little bit about about how you see it and and, and what are the key elements that that you think um, kind of underpin how uh, Johnson Controls is bringing that kind of technology and customer focus to life that helped win this award? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, you have to think about the role that chillers play inside of many buildings, um, as do other pieces of HVAC equipment like rooftops, for example, right? I mean, if you look at chillers and rooftops, I mean, they are pretty much responsible for, you know, the cooling needs of, uh, you know, buildings all across the world, whether they're in extremely hot climates, cooler climates, arid climates, you know, uh, all kinds of different types of environments, rugged environments, uh, on uh, ships out at sea, um, you know, and, and in government, you know, institutions. So, you know, I, I don't think, you know, people fully understand how important of an asset a chiller is. And if you think about like a use case within a hospital where, you know, if you're down in Houston, Texas, and a chiller goes down in the middle of the summer inside of a hospital, that means, you know, you're going to have to relocate an entire wing of patients from, you know, one wing of the hospital to another wing of the hospital or find another place to take them, some of them who may be in very critical and serious conditions. And so it's not optimal to lose a chiller. And, you know, and especially once you lose a chiller or once a chiller is in distress, the, you know, the building uh, maintenance supervisor, the people that, that, are, that are in facilities, are desperate and they are going to call whoever they can to come and fix the chiller, even if it's a Johnson Controls chiller and the Johnson Controls service branch nearby. And so with connected chillers, what we really try to do is look at this from how can Johnson Controls help our customers and new customers, you know, be much more effective and um, stable in terms of how chillers operate in their critical facilities. And by connecting these chillers, you know, and 
pulling the data in real time, like we do in the smart buildings, you know, from the edge up to the cloud, um, you know, standardizing it, understanding that the, the faults that are being thrown off the chillers, being able to apply artificial intelligence to generate, you know, chiller health scores and things like that, we're able to benchmark a chiller against other chillers that exist in our portfolio. We're able to um, proactively understand what faults a chiller is de generating. We're able to see how a chiller has been set. We're able to look at things like vibrational monitoring to understand if it's a chiller is under duress. And now, you know, with our most recent launches around ratings twin, where we can actually look at the predicted output um, of the chiller uh, as it's been specced versus how it's actually per performing. And what do we do with that information? You know, that enables our local service branches uh, to have a much more deep and analytical relationship with our local customers. So we can go to that hospital and say, hey, you know, we noticed that, you know, uh, your oil levels might be lower than, you know, what would run at optimality. Can we proactively get out there and, 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 you know, add oil or replace oil, change oil such that, you know, those levels are much more stable, or we notice that your compressors, you know, um, you know, running suboptimally, can we get out there and check the compressor and make sure that it's functioning properly, you know, or your variable speed drive is pretty old, you know, let, let me order that part, you know, and, and bring it out there and, and preemptively replace your variable speed drive, right? Because if you look at the pattern of HVAC in general, right, whether it's home HVAC or whether it's, you know, commercial HVAC, typically the pattern has been something breaks, you have a catastrophic failure or, you know, water event or something of that nature. And then, you know, you're scrambling, you've created damage, something's down. It's always at the inopportune time. By driving that connectivity and understanding the data, we're much more preemptively able to you know, uh, talk to the customers and be proactive with them around, you know, really addressing concerns that are emerging. And then, you know, chillers also consume a significant amount of energy inside of the building. You know, you could say roughly about 20% uh, of, you know, the energy that's consumed inside of the building comes from a chiller, you know, and so it's a pretty significant amount. And so, you know, with energy monitoring and energy sensors, you know, um, other types of, you know, ingestion in, and what the temperature is outside, being able to adjust those set points, you're actually even able to, you know, uh, adjust those settings in, of the chiller to be much more responsive to what the outside conditions are, thereby saving energy for that customer, you know, to the tune of, you know, 10 to 20%. And then, you know, for central, you know, companies that have central utility plants, which include, you know, chillers and boilers and other equipment inside of a central utility plant in the building, we actually have an even more, um, you know, uh, advanced uh, capability, you know, that uh, focuses on the central plant and, you know, uh, really optimizes, you know, with advanced algorithms, how that central plant functions holistically uh, to optimize, you know, both the energy consumption and the comfort, uh, and we're really able to get you know deep diagnostics. So what we've done is we've started with those customers who just want to start with base connectivity. You know, make sure that you know their their chiller environment is stable, and we can be much more predictive in under understanding the faults. All the way up to much more sophisticated solutions like vibration analysis, um, central plant optimization. Um, such that, you know, we can give additional value uh, based upon that initial base level of connectivity. So, you know, now, now you've been recognized with this award, what comes next? What comes next for Johnson Controls? Things don't stand still. So, well, uh, so the, the last next? time, you know, we, we received this award, we just had connected chillers, you know, that was really what we focused on. Now we have a full suite of connected asset solutions across, you know, security uh, controls. And so we have connected chillers, we've got connected controls, and now we have connected security. And, you know, we are rapidly connecting 
other pieces of equipment, you know, whether those are pumps inside of a building or other high value assets. And we believe this pattern of connectivity where you take the data from the, the building for different assets standalone or integrated into the smart building, you know, um, you know, you can bring together this complete view of the building and really understand the data of the building. And in my mind, it's all about the data. We also just recently acquired a company called FM Systems um, based mm -hmm. in Raleigh, North Carolina, who is a leader in intelligent workplace management systems. And one of the things that they bring to the table is really taking the BIM files at construction and understanding the overall space while it actually gets planned and what are the what are the actual um, you know patterns and what are the actual where the ass, assets placed and they actually have a, a repair order um, system as part of that system as well as a best in class insights um, platform to understand how the space is being utilized as well as you know an employee experience which allows employees to book spaces and 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 report maintenance tickets and things of that nature and so if you think about now our connected assets leadership understanding how the space is being utilized and how the topology of the space is laid out and then energy and sustainability optimization that we have with open blue software so we are in my opinion you know the the leader in understanding everything that's going on inside of a building end to end and really give our customers now uh, a set of solutions that you know they can pick and choose around what problems that they're trying to solve and how we can use that integrated data in order to help them solve them so that's what i'm really super excited about is you know how the breadth of our portfolio has grown in just two short years. And, you know, um, we'll continue to build upon that, you know, with new areas like generative AI, you know, as we go forward into 2024. So it's a super exciting time for Johnson Controls. And I think, you know, our renaissance for, you know, the buildings industry as we go forward. And we're, we're thrilled to be, you know, a leader and, and leading, you know, in, in many ways across that space. BJ, that's great. Thank you. I mean, look, it's it's certainly a, it's certainly an exciting time. Um, I think a, a time of change and and a, and a time of transformation, a time of innovation. Um, but great to hear your passion talking about the subject. Um, I think it is exciting times ahead. So, best wishes for for a great journey um, as you go through those uh, those next steps. And thank you to uh, to uh, everybody who has watched this. So, many thanks. All the best.